Welcome back to the North American LCS. The teams are readying up on stage for round two between Cloud9 and Team Dignitas. And Dignitas came out the gate swinging. Yeah, 23 minutes. And this is also a team that has 2 owed CLG and 2 owed TSM since adding Adrian to the roster. And now they would be on the verge of 2 owing C9 if the 23-minute win is any indication. And that's almost historic since we switched to best of three. So few teams have been able to take down that trio of teams. So whatever it is that this Team Dignitas team has been doing, they may have found something special if they can maintain this level of success. Dignitas is such a roller coaster of emotion when you watch this team and their successes and their failures. They started off this split looking so good because even when you were talking about their downtime in the middle of the split earlier, you're, you said they went from five and one to five and five. Well, to go from that, you have to start off five and one, which is pretty awesome. And then you go zero and four, which is the opposite of awesome. And now you're back to taking down these top teams in two zeros, which is again, back to awesome. Yeah, it's been a split of peaks and valleys for Team Dignitas because you can five and one team that then becomes a five and five team. You don't think you're gonna turn it back around. So right. a lot of good, but a lot of inconsistency. Definitely not willing to call them cream of the crop as of yet, but another win, if they can do it in an impressive fashion, goes a long way into putting them in that conversation. Well, jumping into picks and bans for game number two, Cloud9 will take LeBlanc and Callista out of the picture, Dignitas removing Syndra. Remember, C9 did play that Callista in game number one, but they don't want to allow it to happen here again. Yeah, and the game was so fast for Team Dignitas, it was hard to point to a single thing that kind of swung it in their favor. But I think the Maokai was a big part of that, being able to first pick it. They have decided to use the Cinder ban on Jensen and the Caitlyn ban on Sneaky's Caitlyn for the early laning phase. And I'm very curious to see if they let Maokai go through. Yeah. Because Impact would just take that up in the top lane, and I think it's very worthy of the first pick. Absolutely. Dignitas, if they don't ban Maokai here, I will be interested to see what they value over banning that, especially knowing how useful it is to themselves. Yep. Yeah. Taking that off the table, not willing to risk it. And this means Zaxa. Right. So that's how much of a premium Team Dignitas is putting on that. And this is the position that a lot of red side teams have been put in this patch because you're, either, you're letting through one of a necessary evil, so to speak. Uh, and you need to be able to make sure you're getting something of value on the backside because they could have just left both of these guys up if they had wanted to and then picked double tanks for themselves. So what will they go with is the question here. Cho'Gath oh. went unpicked last game, but is also real strong. Big old Cho'Gath, so much damage potential. Watching a 10,000 HP monster stomp around the rift and then munch somebody for 2K. Definitely something that I never figured I would see in League of Legends anytime soon, but yeah. we live in a crazy world, Jat, and that crazy world has big old Cho'Gaths in it. It With also has Thresh. Very good vocal spikes is really what did it for Cho. We're gonna have to see if Cho goes jungle or top lane. We have seen him in both of those roles already. I like him more jungle, but it really Same. depends on how much time Shrimp has put in on it. Well, I mean, so much of the champion revolves around health stacking and multiplying because of what you get from your passive on your ulti, as well as just building health items. Cinder Hulk just has so much value. Building that in the jungle feels so good. Thresh picked up, that was banned away last game, so Dignitas getting that for themselves as well as keeping it away from Smoothie as Cloud9 locks in the Taric. And that is an early Taric pick for a champion that I think is good on this patch, but hasn't been prioritized very heavily. Notice the 0.6% pick rate in the summer split. The one was the Phoenix One game where they ran a wall of tanks at C9 and were pretty successful with it. Interesting to see Cloud9 opting with that strategy we've been seeing more and more lately where you grab the mid laner before the second round of bans. I mean, it makes a lot of sense with how heavily focused the mid lane was last game. They want to make sure that they have something that they're really comfortable with, especially for Jensen. Yeah, and Keen then makes sure he can't get banned out. We'll go Talia into Orianna. Probably trying to neutralize that lane. Jensen's Orianna has been his best champion this split. Oh yeah, look at the stats. I mean, he's got better numbers in literally every category than the average. Pretty insane. Meanwhile, Keen's Talia has been okay. You can see the average yeah. Talia doesn't necessarily do great in lane. So Keen doing well. Yep, he's got better CSD. He's got a better KDA, but his damage per minute and his kill participation are a bit down compared to other Talia players. Jarvan banned away by Dignitas as we head into phase two here, trying to 
limit some of that multi-initiation potential that Cloud9 may want to draft. They've already got Zac, who is a huge yeah. tool for getting into the fights. So they want to make sure they don't get to pair the Jarvan along with that Sivir banned out by Cloud9. Yeah, and Team Ningertas always has the option of throwing Cho'Gath up into top lane. Mm -hmm. So they can ban top laners and not have to worry about starving their own champion pool if they want to do that. Meanwhile, C9 is a little bit hamstrung in the bans they can throw at them. They may end up banning Janna as well, because that can be a great disengage for Zac or even Tarek. Uh, and it's something Adrian has played, but a lot of different things C9 can do with this last ban. Well, Dignitas does already have Thresh, so Janna probably ah, not sorry. that big of a thing. You're right. I lose track of that sometimes. Yeah, he's a big green monster. It, it's because support. he's a big green monster, and you see him with a smite thing next to his name, so you're thinking, oh, they drafted a jungler. No big yeah. deal. I do that all the time. Yeah, Twitch I Chat. just try to hide it. Twitch Chat never does that. They are always no. free to point out the mistakes, which is the good thing. Yeah, they're, they're probably laughing at us for our yeah. silly bronze-level mistakes right now, but Tristana banned away by Cloud9 as they want to pinch that AD carry pool a bit. Dignitas picking up the graves here does indicate that Cho'Gath is heading towards the top lane. Yeah, and it's similar to what Team Nikitas did yesterday where they did Graves jungle with Maokai in the top lane. So huge tank top and then trying to get more damage out of the jungle. We've even seen Blade of the Ruin King Graves to try and shred through tanks. But we don't know if C9 is going with tanks yet. And we also don't have reliable CC on Team Nikitas' side. A much different type of CC that Cho'Gath brings than a Maokai would bring. So not the same level of setup to line up that Graves damage. No point and click, no massive screen covering AOE with the Maokai ulti. Cloud9 will go ahead, draft the Varus for themselves, so adding some more CC to this team. The Chains of Corruption. One left to pick, though. They've still got to find themselves a top laner in here. Something that can deal with that Cho'Gath. Yeah, that Camille and Jarvan were banned away, things that somebody doesn't want to play against. They can, with reasonable certainty, know they're playing against it here. Shen hasn't been that good into tanks. No. Uh, but it would increase their kind of all-in dive potential if they're going in with the Zac, and it's something Impact is really experienced on. The one thing you've also got to be concerned about against Cho'Gath is Shen. He has two different ways on basic spells to stop your ultimate from going through. So you really have to be completely away from him when you channel that, mm -hmm. since Barrel Scream and Rupture both do the job of interrupting it. Ooh. Okay, Dignitas, bringing out the Twitch. Yeah, well, we know that there were a lot of AD carry bans. Five AD carry bans and doesn't want to do Jin against Tarek, Zach, Shen. So right. pulls out a hyper carry. Team Dignitas has been able to neutralize early games in order to get the items. And I think Twitch is good with Thresh, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. The Lantern can definitely help. The fact that he doesn't have a huge amount of mobility on his own, but still not reliable CC for Team Dignitas. If they get the right setup, the Twitch can be spectacular, but they're going to have to land their skill shots. Exactly. Twitch just needs to be able to get that free firing time, be that hyper carry. But I am glad to not see them lock in the Jin. We have seen Jin picked into like multiple tank comps a couple of times already, and it just doesn't feel good at all, really. So opting away from that and instead adapting. And the adaptation from Dignitas is another thing that I've really enjoyed watching recently. This whole, this team, I was talking about it earlier, I think with Azale, about how a lot of times when you see a team that's around the middle of the pack, if they're playing up against another middle of the pack team or even a top team, sometimes they'll just play reactively the entire time. Yeah. They'll just say, okay, how can we respond to this? How can we stop this from getting out of control? But Dignitas just seems so decisive these days. They seem like they really have a game plan and they're sticking to it. And that's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, and it's not like they're just drafting off the tier list. Because you look at these team compositions and they are completely unique to the game one champions. Ten new champions in this game. Well, here we go. Second round between Dignitas and Cloud9. C9 got to find the win here if they want to keep this series alive. Otherwise, Dignitas will take another 2-0 against one of the usual top contenders in North America. Granted, they might not be at the top of the standings right now, but still one of the teams that's in viability for playoffs. And if Dignitas yeah. can go through the back end of Summer Split here and just 2-0 all the people they might go up against in, in playoffs, that's a really good omen. It's such a statement, and it would give them so much confidence. And yes, C9 is on the lower end of the playoffs right now, but they've been to the finals two splits in a row with pretty much the same roster. You expect C9 to be up there at the end of the splits is based on their reputation. You think they're going to be able to pull it together. See if they do an early invade here. 
with the Taric. Taric stun can be very good at level one. It's been recently buffed to do 100 damage at rank one. Yeah, the base damage on that thing is insane for the first level, especially if you end up getting into a situation where your opponents would face check you during the level one and he gets it off on multiple people. It's just a nightmare. So very understandable why Dignitas doesn't want to try anything cheeky moving into Cloud9 territory as, at the beginning of this game. Instead, just taking defensive positions, throwing a couple threaded volleys in there. They walk up to the bush, but they've zoned their opponents away enough to not be in danger. Keen had walked up pretty close there. Would have been in danger of a stun if C9 had stuck around. They did not, though. Dignitas thinking maybe they can find something here in this tri brush. It's not warded just yet, so Cloud9 giving the leash. We could see a late invade here by the bottom lane. They're trying for a super leash on Zach. And Team Dignitas just wants to push him back. They're hoping to just reset the red buff rather than anything else. Really want to stop this super leash, but Contracts moves over in time, finds his way onto it. He'll secure that as someday gets smacked around a little bit by impact. Low HP for now, but what you got to remember about Cho'Gath, he gets a lot of regeneration by killing minions. Yeah, but he's going to need a lot more there. I mean, he's got Doran's ring start, and Shen's early trading with his Q will outpace Cho'Gath's early trading with his E. So, Impact wanting to play this matchup. Shen not known as a lane bully, but neither is Cho. So, if Impact can get a huge lead in the lane here, could really put someday in the deficit. Big boost in the fan vote for Dignitas in game number two after the performance in game yeah. number one. They were at 20-something the first time around, now up to 40, so... Got some more believers as Shrimp gank. makes the level two gank at the top side here onto Impact, getting down multiple auto attacks at point blank range, and you know how bad those hurt when you're up against Graves. Yeah, time the gank to try and release some pressure, but Contracts had that super leash. He's level three. One level up over Shrimp, but Zach versus Graves isn't really a 1v1 fight that Zach wants to take in almost any situation. Shrimp getting himself back into his own jungle. Contract still hangs around. Impact using the TP to get back into lane after healing up. Doesn't really have a lot to work with here. I mean, you're still talking about a Dorian shield and a potion, so the gank came so early, he didn't get a good back. Yeah, the question here will be, can Shrimp not fall too far behind the jungle after giving that level two gank? Because it was pretty necessary mm -hmm. uh, to help somebody out, and it set Impact back a little bit. So Impact was smart enough to save his skill point at level two to be able to skill the taunt, but as far as taking trades, you would want to be able to go W second on Shen to block auto attacks in melee versus melee trades. I think that's what Strip was hoping he would do. Very nice death sentence on the sneaky from Adrian. His contracts again shows up into the top side. Taking the gank on the Sunday, who flashes away him. from it, but stretching strike will still find the mark. As the taunt comes in from impact, and Sunday is not long for this world. First blood over to Cloud9. Oh, Zach, don't even have to land the E to get that Q onto the opponent. Someday flashed early. That meant the rest of the CC could line up in both Impact and Contract save flash, so they can do that again. And let's not forget, you don't normally have to land Q either. Just throw it out a minion, then right-click the guy. Right there, forces the flash early, but he still hits the Q, smacks him into a minion, taunt through. And with no graves there, it is just... Someday falling. He does have teleport though, so the return gank is what would really set him back in that lane. Currently, it's just a kill for contracts. Adrian with a God. very God. nice dodge on that stun, sidestepping both as another death sentence finds its way onto Sneaky, who's forced to blow both summoner spells to escape certain death as the roam comes in from Keen. Yeah, and smooth as exhaust. Adrian just weaving through exactly the areas he needs to, but Contract's looking to take this lane over. Remember, there is Taunt Flash available if they want to go for Someday here. Oh, the camp is strong with this one. He makes another return trip. Someday knocked up into the air, tries to pop the rupture to get himself away, but help is not coming anytime soon. Contract's picking up yet another successful gank for himself. And Shrimp trying to do everything he can on the other side of the map, but that top lane is just going very awry. One of the reasons I like Cho in the jungle, because there you see the early laning phase can be exploited a little bit. You don't expect it to happen with the Shen, so having impact and contract snowball off the top side, not something Team Dignitas was expecting. Definitely not, and with that Shen getting bigger and stronger, he'll be able to itemize that much more effectively against these heavy auto attackers or the strong mages on the side of Dignitas. However he wants to do this, he'll be in a good spot to be strong in this mid game and have really impactful ultimates. Yeah, already Bami Cinder completed for contract, so he's not gonna slow down any time soon. 
Honestly, the changes to Cinder Hulk, one reason why we're seeing a lot of these tank junglers again, just because the item dropping 200 gold from the price point makes it just so much easier to not have to go out of your way and have a bad back time. You can go back at a natural back timing, still pick it up, keep farming, keep being effective. Exactly, because you look at Shrimp, who's gone for an early longsword, and that's what used to outpace the warrior junglers more so than the tank junglers, is they can always be building damage and increasing their clear on the way to their items, and tank junglers couldn't do the same. Contracts is already level six. Ooh, the nicely timed play, though, as the shockwave finds its way onto Keen. Adrian is just mechanically on it in game two. Yeah, he has been pulling off a lot of plays. Getting that flay back, very key to not allow contracts to chain with his Zach ultimate. Keen also just absorbing that shockwave from Jensen. Again from contracts, so much uh -oh. pressure from this guy in this game. Manages to slap Keen backwards onto the minions, forces out the flash from him, and contracts is phenomenal from the jungle this game. Yeah, he's taking over this game uh, and can casually go take his Raptors in red, get closer and closer to level seven, but he's out leveling the game and also has been incredibly active with his ganks. I mean, he's hot. Yeah, he's higher leveled. He's had more ganks. Shrimp's just being completely outdone in every respect from the jungle this time around, mm -hmm. which is very unfortunate because on a champion like Graves, you want to be able to try to carry. Yeah, one of those questions was how can Shrimp recover from the early level two gank? Those things are very costly as a jungler if they don't get you a kill. It's a very annoying to the enemy top laner who thinks, oh my god, this guy's camping me, but you lose a lot. Shrimp's jungle was pushed behind. That bought time for contracts to gank. Knowing Shrimp would probably be hard farming for a while because when you early gank, you leave a lot of your jungle up and need to spend the time later to farm. He's also been able to get the flash out of Keen, so he wants to come back. And he's got so many avenues and paths from which to do that. Remember, just the fact that he is Zack presents so many new opportunities for him like this. Jumping out from the Wraith Pit, potentially, but having to cancel it out, not knowing really where Keen's at, means he can't do that with any reasonable amount of certainty. First Drake's Infernal, too, by the way, so if oh. this keeps going crazy, you might see attention down there as Adrian connects another death sentence onto Sneaky. Adrian and Alltech not struggling at all in the bottom lane this time. Yeah, I mean, Adrian is just weaving hooks. I don't know how that made it through the minion to hit Sneaky, but it did somehow. Looking at that bottom lane, definitely been crushing so far. I mean, look at the stats, 80% KP, 5.75 kills per game, almost 1,000 gold up at 15. And another hook, this time only on the turret, so not really where he wanted it. Yeah, didn't have the minion wave, but we'll still get the cooldown refund on his death sentence and allows all tech free time to farm up. Both supports went coin this game too. Yeah. I'm glad they're catching on because yep. you just got to mouse over the gold and say, hmm, he's got way more. It's like, huh, this thing gives me 500. This gives me 1400. Not really too difficult to crunch the numbers on that one, but still hard sometimes to adapt from the old ways that players have become so accustomed to for so long as Adrian and Alltech make their roam up towards mid lane, but they yeah. walk right over a ward and their plans are foiled. Wards in the river being very crucial here. Contracts is going to go for that dive and it would have been counter ganked if they didn't have the river wars to see Alltech, Adrian, and Shrimp coming up that way. Because Contracts is again hanging out topside though, this is the sign for Dignitas to go for that Infernal Drake I was talking about. Any sort of chance you get to go for that is one you want to take. Someday, trying to flash away from Contracts there as the Let's Bounce doesn't really accomplish much of anything thanks to the flash. Someday is just got to be frustrated with the amount of attention being paid to him right now by this Cloud9 jungler. Yeah, he's getting camped and he needs to make sure he can keep his farm up. So far he is at least getting his CS and you hope for his sake that Impact doesn't take over. You can see Impact has gone early, Spectre's Callum probably going into a Titanic Hydra. That's actually a really good dueling build if you get to it early on Shen and Impact should be able to win that 1v1 against Someday for quite some time. I do want to mention that that Infernal Drake picked up by Dignitas will also be very effective for this composition, having a hyperscaling AD carry as well as a damage-heavy jungler. Mm -hmm. They'll get a lot of extra use out of that multiplier for themselves, so a nice early pickup. Again, going back to what I've mentioned time and time already, Dignitas seeing opportunities and chances to punish their opponents and taking them. Okay, Contracts is camping our top laner. Life is really, really hard for someday but this is something we can translate into an advantage for the rest of the team as a whole. Someday can keep farming it out, and he'll still be useful later. Yeah, Keen did not fall to any of the Contracts ganks, even if it burned a lot of his summoner spells, so at least Jensen isn't snowballing as of yet. Jensen has crazy CS this game, 114 yeah. at 11 minutes, so there's a danger of that, but for now, Team Dignitas is holding on. 
In case you guys at home are wondering why Jensen's Orianna does more damage than your Orianna, it's because he has 114 CS right now and your average solo queue Ori probably has about 70. Yeah. He does more damage because he has more money. Yeah. <laughs> and he also lands all of his skill shots. So a you lot hit of your abilities shots. and you've got more money, you're gonna have more effect in League of Legends. What a crazy concept as Jensen with his blue buff and all his money and all his skill shot accuracy continues to farm up, get closer and closer to that Morello Namicon. And shutting the healing down could be very, very important too against this Dignitas team. I mean, Cho'Gath can heal up very effectively. Shrimp, if he goes for lifesteal, can. Same can be said for all tech. So mm -hmm. should be getting some value out of that Morello Namicon passive after he completes it this game too. Cloud9 up over 1,000 gold still, thanks to these early advantages. I do want to point out these roams by Team Dignitas, though. Alltech and Adrian have been around the mid lane a lot, and I think that's what's kept Jensen at bay a little bit. Once again, that's a play where they would have gone all in on Keen, but Alltech was right there. And even with all the roaming from Adrian, Alltech was still doing well in the bottom lane, so stand-up performance by them so far. Impact just taking it to someday yeah. one versus one now. Contracts has given him enough help that he no longer needs it. He can just deal with someday point blank like this. Adrian's play. play not finding the mark this time. Contracts purposely aims it to the side as now Adrian trying to get himself back. Alltech exhausted. Stand United coming in. Let's bounce taking Adrian over the wall. Alltech has to flash. Here comes the dive. Niki gonna be protected, but he's below almost 100 HP. Barely able to escape for now. Smoothie and Impact getting themselves back as Shrimp goes over the wall, starting the fight back onto the Zac here as Contracts Very jumps aggressive. back in. Contracts now leading the charge, and Shrimp will fall 4-0, Cloud9. Yeah, Shrimp hugely overconfident towards the end of that because they had already lost Adrian, and Shen had already ulted down. Someday wasn't coming, so don't E over the wall into the whole team. By yourself. Uh, lesson one of many of the lessons you have to learn playing League of Legends, but anyway, Big play for C9 now because they can take the turret right off of this and that'll give them huge control of the game. Someday starting to channel the in. TP. Wants to come down here and try to protect this. It does get channeled in time. He'll show up, he'll clear out the wave. The dive comes in, contracts on now to Alltech. And they bring him down, but the reinforcements have arrived. Dignitas will attempt to hold this, but with a turret gone, there's no way they can. Someday and Adrian now in full retreat. Contracts wants those stretching strikes. He gets one. Play means he can't get the auto attack to land the slam, but 5-0 for Cloud9 plus turret first blood equates to a 4,000 gold lead. This is looking a lot like last game, but with the side switch. Yeah, C9 completely turning it around this game. They were winning every lane last game too, but this time they're doing all the right things with it. Contract's almost predicting that Adrian would try and play him, so he ease way over to the side of him, knowing he just has to get close. Then, Altec and Adrian try and take the fight, but they just don't have the numbers right here. Tarek, Shen, enough to dive in. And, and Shrimp, he's all alone, man. It's just Altec and him. Maybe he thought he'd be able to get sneaky blind, but Contract's waiting on a control ward, change the CC. Keen's there, but so is Jensen. Goes from bad to worse. Another stun lands from Smoothie, and this game is starting to get out of hand. Dignitas needs to staunch this bleeding if they want to have any chance, because Cloud9 is just a whole different team from what we saw in game yeah. number one. Now having taken down that first outer turret, they move their bottom lane towards the top side. Sneaky and Smoothie will start pushing this one out. And Someday's got a hell of a CS advantage over Impact right now. He's 30 CS up. But when you look at the KDs on the two of them, 2-0 and 3 versus 0-2-0, and look at the gold difference, it's still Impact, who's 500 gold ahead. Yeah, Impact has had the more influential plays in this game, for sure. Team Mingatov still unable to find their way onto the scoreboard, and some of this uh, can be attributed to how dominant they were in the first game. Sometimes when everything is working for you in one game, it carries over into the next, and you just think every play is gonna work. Things like someday teleporting into that turret, or Shrimp going over the wall, just scream overconfidence to me, uh, whereas they are behind this game and they have to change the way they're playing. C9 has changed the way they're playing. They were actually a little bit uh, more controlled in the early game than they were in game one. You didn't see the same type of invades from contracts, but just executing on their plays and now going around the map trying to take down the outer turrets. And, Make this quick victory. Hey, Contracts didn't bother with that heavy invade style like you would see from the Kane. Instead, just going on the Zac, playing this constant ganking champion, and being an effector of every single lane has done wonders for Cloud9, who have just adapted so well against Team Dignitas. Being on blue side and allowing themselves to have that first power pick has 
really put them in a spot to take over this early game, and now Rift Herald will give them even more tools to push those advantages. Yeah, Shrimp trying to get the second Drake here. They should be able to get it, even give... Well, they would be able to give a consume over someday if he hadn't used it on a minion, but uh, the gold deficit getting a little bit out of control of these Drakes not going to matter as much. No, Drakes aren't going to help if you're 4,500 gold behind. They'll alleviate it a little bit, but you're going to need a lot more than that to stay relevant here as Dignitas. They need time to scale. They need time for Twitch to become massive, for Cho'Gath to get those stacks, but Cloud9 will not give them that time now as they demolish this last Tier 1 turret, completing that outer ring and giving them even more map control. Yeah, and C9 has so much playmaking in this team composition. Zach can jump in with Oriana. Shen can up on top of that. You can get the Terra Call to give them invulnerability under the turret. They have a lot of ways to convert this lead as well. The one thing you would want to point out, though, is they, with this control, should have probably had better Drake control because having an Infernal and an Ocean would really help them snowball this to victory. Still can't really criticize too much, though, when you're five no. kills to zero, 5,000 up, 17 minutes in. 100% kill participation on both impact and contracts as well, these two putting in a lot of work for Cloud9 in this second game. Have to see if they can keep it up as we enter into the mid-game portion with all those outer turrets destroyed. That means that Cloud9 will now look to find more rotations, get more vision and information down in the enemy jungle, and try to just choke Dig out of the game. But Altec and Adrian will do everything they can to stay in this one. We were talking about how successful these guys have been since being paired up as a duo. Yeah. And if they can get to the late game, if you can hit a five or six item Twitch, you always have the one Twitch, one team fight win condition. Yeah, absolutely. They are seven and one since teaming up on Team Nigatos as the game scored three and oh in matches. 1-0 up in this series, but as we mentioned, things are looking pretty grim and he still hasn't completed his Blade of the Ruined King. Speaking of Blade of the Ruined King, that's actually the second item for Shrimp this game, which yeah. we've seen a couple of Graves build adaptations from him today and yesterday, and usually it was Warrior Black Cleaver was the old school Graves build, but now we've seen Blade of the Ruined King. Some people have gone Death Dances in like solo queue. There's been a lot of Dusk Blade in solo queue ever since the changes yeah. to it, but when you're up against such a tanky lineup like this, Dusk Blade doesn't feel as good. Yeah, I don't think Dusk Blade is a choice against Zack Shen. Blade of the King does make more sense as long as it's followed with the Black Cleaver to then get it, your armor shred in. But we're talking far into the future there, and Team Nikitas needs to get out of the here and now. That's sometimes the problem of those builds when you're thinking two or three items in the future. You just never yeah. get two. Your eyes are so far towards what is going to be happening 20 minutes from now, you don't notice that everything is being lost right now. As the Rift Herald is summoned in the mid lane, the tier two is the goal for Cloud9. But the it. Weaver's Wall will not stop Shelly from making her way onto the turret. They're trying to use the ultimate from Taric to keep contracts alive, and they will successfully prevent that death from coming through as a huge shockwave hits Dignitas. Finding four members, the tier two falls. Cloud9 continues pressuring oh. forward, and contracts will live yet again. Rift Herald continuing to push forward. The eye is exposed. Displacement doesn't go through. Rift Herald does die after only finding a little bit of damage onto that tier three, but such a phenomenal ulti from Jensen to shut that fight down. Yeah, it looked like Team Nikitas might be able to turn that uh, until C until Jensen's suit Shockwave makes it so nobody dies, but that's what happened this fight. The Reaper's Wall does not stop the charge or the Zac going over, but this does mean Contract doesn't really have help. A uh, Smoothie is linked with Contract, so he can make him invulnerable while he bounces out. That rupture, pretty critical, uh, could have converted a lot. And then because the turret was still up, C9 doesn't want to follow through too hard. They have to finish off the turret for a while. 6,000 gold, Jet. 19 minutes, minutes into the game. Last game, it was 10,000 gold, uh, 21 minutes in. 14 Ding Toss over C9. So it has been a total tale of two games here. Last game also ended three minutes from now. Yeah. So, Cloud9, <laughs> as good as they're doing, I don't know if they'll be able to match Dignitas' clear speed from game number one, but they are still looking just incredible as a team here in game number two. Knight's Val done for contracts as his second item. So that'll be very useful for keeping those carries alive and allowing them to continue pushing this advantage further and further back into the Dignitas base and taking us towards that game three that they want so badly. Yeah. Remember what's on the line for these teams. They both want to make a statement with only a couple of weeks left of regular play in Summer Split 2017. Playoffs are coming up soon. Yeah, I mean, Team Nuritas, two wins out of 
first place. C9, three wins out of first place. Uh, even if you're not getting a first round bye, getting a higher seed in the playoffs is pretty huge. Side selection can be very important in playoffs, not to mention if you're the three seed, being able to play against the six seed, really good. We know how deep the top of the standings is this year. You got TSM, CLG, Immortals, C9, Dignitas. There's a lot of teams up there. And then, even though Envy has shown a lot of big games, they are not considered in the same tier as the rest of these teams. So you'd want the number three seed uh, if that means an easier early round matchup. Absolutely. It could be the difference between the ticket to the semifinals or not. Impact continuing to pressure onto Sunday as the mid lane finds itself under siege for the rest of Cloud9. Contracts jumping in onto Adrian there, finding the stun. Smoothie facilitating that one as the death sentence works back onto Contracts, but he is just so tanky. Yeah, I mean, Knight's found into Tabi against the Graves, who doesn't even have Blade of the Rune King or any armor shredding potential. Not going to be doing much as Team Dignitas and C9 making the rounds. Can still move towards Baron, but I think they want the other turrets first if possible. Also knowing the Infernal Drake is up in a little bit and they haven't controlled the Drake that well so far, means they are fine to take their time. And this is another case of evidence of the same thing you were talking about last game, Chad, where you said this patch and the tendency towards these heavy tanks, if a team gets really far ahead, they just become unkillable before you can stack all their penetration items and different damage types. And everything becomes so difficult in terms of stopping their momentum, and now Cloud9 will equalize the Infernal Trade. Yeah, cool lead only getting bigger from here, 6,000. Still have to worry about all tech scaling to the late game, but C9 doesn't have to worry too much about that. Oh, very nicely done by Jensen. Still can't quite find the kill because Adrian's there with the save, but Death Sentence won't find the mark either. Adrian loses half his HP to a basic combo for Moriana. This is how big the is big. right now as Keen gets himself jumped on. Shouldn't be any way out of this one. The stretching strikes come back. Keen somehow still keeping himself alive as the Taric ulti provides some safety for a moment. Jensen grabs the kill onto Adrian, and Cloud9 goes one for zero there. Yeah, someday even teleported in, had to back away immediately as impact matched. Now C9 can try and force a 5v4 onto this Baron. They already have control wards and have forced a few recalls. Shrimp not really in a spot where he would want to try to steal it either. Cloud9 in such control with so much damage potential. Shrimp goes in even a second too early. They can just blow him up and shut down any steal opportunity that may be available for Dignitas. Alltech wanting to push up, just try to create some kind of thing that Cloud9 has to answer, just buy some more time for Dig. But yeah. this is a one-item twitch. Yeah, he's he's not very threatening yet. Still farming up. And I'm a little surprised C9 didn't go for immediate Baron priority right there. They were a little bit low. Ooh, that would have been a kill. Oh, yeah. Jensen pretty strong here. And 1,900 gold in his pocket. Ready to go shopping. But decent recalls here by C9. And this is a, a minor annoyance because they are up by five or 6,000. But if everyone else is going to recall, you need to recall as well so that you don't delay your Baron setup by 20 seconds. Picks up an Odyssey Large Rod and is still walking back with 350 gold. So he's not using that wave that he picked up in the mid lane at all for this next push. It just seemed like he wanted to greet out a little bit, make sure he got all those minions. Yep. But stopping your team from getting that setup, again, it goes back to what we're talking about. You're looking at this guy, you're seeing the plays that he can make on the Orianna, catching Keen out as he rides that wall away, but then Cloud9 not playing completely as a cohesive unit. Contract nice getting himself caught out a bit here. Tarek stuns come in. Protection coming through. The root down onto the enemy jungler, and Shrimp is already out of the picture. Someday grab the kill onto Sneaky with the feast. All tech drops, though, and Cloud9 is in an awesome position to take this further. Impact making the flash taunt happen. Keen popping the cleanse to escape. Threaded volley's coming back as he kites backwards. Adrian throws out Death Sentence just to get Jensen to sidestep and buy a little bit of extra time. Contract's losing the pass, and, but the dark passage will not save Keen this time. Not able to get just enough damage in on the backside, and Somebody really held on to his feast for a long time. Yes, he finished off Sneaky, but could have delayed the fight a little bit more by getting someone off the table very early. C9 again might think about turning for Baron, but they're pretty low, and the death timers aren't that long yet. 14 bigger toss, so gonna be another reset. Yeah, most likely. Low HP on the tank, Sneaky being dead. Could have been a disaster at Baron, wanted to avoid that. Yeah, so somebody didn't want to feast contracts early because he had just break into a bunch of pieces and they'd still have to finish him off. But imagine just feasting earlier before he lets bounce. Does that mean Shrimp never gets pulled into the fight and Impact doesn't have the follow-up 
He eventually does get the feast, the nice feast on Siki. Uh, but C9 still able to win the fight and contracts a big part of it. Very difficult to fight from behind for Team Ranger Toss, and C9 still has all that team fighting prowess with Zach, Tarek, and Oriana. Every so single fight, Cloud9 keeps coming up with more and more and more. It's just like game number one was for Dignitas. Cloud9 cannot lose their momentum, it seems. Yeah. They're not presenting Dignitas any fights where they're saying, hey, this could be the throw. All you got to do is catch it out. That last one looked like it could have been that way, mm -hmm. but Cloud9 still played it better. They were able to come out on top. And now with an almost 8,000 gold lead, 26 minutes into the game, Baron becomes more and more of that realistic possibility you were talking about as they clear out the vision and set up a round. Yeah, I think they should be forcing plays around Baron. I'm a little surprised that they haven't actually stuffed out the game here because they did have that five or 6,000 gold lead very early on, and they have so many initiation tools on their team. At this point, they have Talisman of Ascension on Taric. They still have Shen Zack. They even have Varus, who can initiate with his ultimate. They have a lot of things that they should be fairly free to run towards Team Dignitas with. Not a huge criticism, though. They are still up 8,000 gold and eight kills, only 27 minutes, and most likely going to close out this game, but leaving the door ever so slightly ajar for Team Dignitas to come back in. Still 100% kill participation on contract Zack as well. This is a champion that we have seen banned so much ever since the rework on him, but now he finally gets to go through. There's enough other OPs to pressure him away from the bans, and Cloud9 is showing exactly why that can be a risky decision when you have a player who can make the most of this champion and the most of that gank power. Contracts flying in now onto Dignitas, again played back by a well-placed Adrian ability. But Cloud9 just not even gonna sweat it. Still has all the pressure, still has all the momentum, and they move back towards Baron. Yeah, and they can set up this side lane as Impact wins the duel over Someday. Delayed a little bit. I mean, they had Someday's TP down four minutes ago, but it's gonna be up in five seconds, so technically the Shogath can teleport in here if they want to contest. Shrimp would have to move pretty fast if they want to go. Dignitas fires off the Weaver's Wall. Contracts stuck in the pit by himself, but can just elastic slingshot his way to safety, not take any more damage from Baron. They do reset the objective. Yeah. Looked like a bit of a split call there. Talisman was popped by Smoothie when they were not able to get close to an initiation. I do want to point out that Someday, with his Gargoyle Stone Plate, could provide incredible amounts of surprise burst in these fights. So you always have that sort of what the hell factor in terms of losing 1,500 of your health all at the same time. I don't know if it'll exactly be that high. Yeah, it doesn't have a huge amount of bonus health yet. So the Stone Plate would take his feast at this point from 600 to about 750. So not a huge burst of true damage from the stone plate alone on Shogath yet. Has no war mogs, only seven key stacks. Not yet level 16, that'll boost him up a little bit. Still always something to keep in mind if you're Cloud9. It can be very difficult to play around that instant amount of damage, but mm -hmm. as long as they can kite the Shogath around and properly control him with this massive tank line they have, they should be able to avoid that fate. Hurricane also done for the Twitch, getting closer and closer towards that team fight prowess. But if you look on the opposite side of the board, Jensen with a Rabadon's Death Cap, Leandri's Torment, Namrello Namicon, QWR, Alltech dies, Keen dies, yeah. Shrimp dies. Sometimes even just QWE uh, with that much damage on Ori versus the level 13 Twitch. The Knight's Vow will help a fair bit, but uh, since Thresh is ranged, the damage reduction and healing from Knight's Vow is halved, so not the same type of item on Thresh as it would be on other melee supports. Dignitas has just not had an ounce of control this entire game. No. They have been on their back foot from start to finish. Ever since that gank failed for Shrimp topside, like you mentioned, he lost that tempo early on in the jungle. He hasn't been able to affect the game at all. The lanes fell behind, contracts did a lot of work. And now they're trying to finish off these remaining tier two turrets, pushing towards those as Contract tries to make the dive. King getting caught out a bit here, bursted down, flashed away, exhaust is out. Stun does not find its way into the fight here from Smoothie, who will flash away, keeping himself safe. TP channeled, someday wants to join the fight, but it's gonna be canceled by the turret falling. Yeah, wanted to find a better teleport location. King now oh, caught King. because he was flanking for the Cho'Gath TP. It all goes wrong at the end there for Team Dignitas. With the enemy mid laner down, this should be a great opportunity for Cloud9 to head towards that Baron you were talking about as well. Taking the enemy red buff on their way out. Someday and Shrimp moving up, thinking that they probably lose the game if they give the Baron up here. Yeah, they have one far side totem left, but it's on a dead king. 
Nice delay. They have 27 more seconds. Keen could make it back in with the Weaver's Wall. Plus, they're getting mid lane priority, so Team Lutus might stall this out yet or just opt to trade it for Cloud Drake. That may be where they're going. That feels really bad, though. Cloud9 moving towards Baron. It's not Some a very realistic around. contest here. It, they have been dodging the initiations, one with the Lantern, the other with the Flash. They are running out of tools, but look, they, they stalled it. C9 not willing to go for these hard forces. Talk yeah. about Team Dignitas around Baron versus C9 around Baron. Team Dignitas has been doing work. I feel like Team Dignitas has just been doing so much this split to dispel those old Dignitas Baron memes, where everybody just says, oh, well, Team Dignitas is ahead. It's time to go throw at Baron. But now at this split, they are just doing so much with Baron, controlling it and knowing when to go for it. And Cloud9's Baron attempts just don't look as coherent. Yeah, like here, yeah. King gets hit by the Zac Cube, but flashes back, and then Lantern's back. So at this point, you're almost wanting to call it off. Should have teleported on the cannon minion if you're someday and you want to get in there, but instead teleports on the turret. There, Keen's now caught below. Contracts jump straight on him. There's no Cho'Gath to help heal. Blast Cone is taken away. Nice pick, but it doesn't turn into anything else other than just the kill on the turret. We now have Someday hitting level 16. Gonna empower his feast a fair bit because he has more bonus health just from hitting level 16 and getting ranked 3 on his ultimate. And still, C9 have yet to secure Baron. Yeah, they do secure the Cloud Drake. So the Drake count is tied up between the two teams now. So when Elder comes online six minutes from now, it'll be an equally powerful buff for both sides. But Cloud9 with a 9,000 gold lead 32 minutes into the game. Still very comfortable where they are. Still very confident in their ability to win a team fight. But you just always have that little bit of doubt in the back of your mind about the fact that they haven't been able to make any more major steps towards winning the game in the last few minutes. Yeah, I mean, they've only suffered one death. If they end up getting Baron and closing it out, you look at the scoreboard, see this is a totally controlled game. But for a team that has a bunch of standout players but hasn't necessarily been able to put a standout record in the standings, this is the type of thing they need to be able to do better. It's definitely the difference between a mid-tier team and a top-tier team is being able to make those macro calls, those team-wide movements, and say, look, we may only have a small window to accomplish this, but we should be able to get this objective. Oh, All Tech oh, now okay. jumped on. Contract starting off the fight, taking out that enemy Twitch is gonna be huge, and Cloud9 finds their pick. And that might be the one to do it, trying to get mid lane priority, but not in range for Adrian's Lantern. Lock down another pick for contracts. And where does C9 go from here? Do they wait to pull, peel back and set up Baron, or do they try and dive knowing Twitch is dead and they have a bunch of tanks? Trying to set up the move onto the mid lane tier three. Contracts stoning away the rest of Dignitas, taken down low. Tarek Ultimate comes in. Cosmic Radiance will protect these guys as they lay the pain onto the inhibitor. Backing themselves up, but still auto attacking on their way out. Hook only finds its way onto the minion. Adrian now brought down by the dominating impact as the Shockwave finds its way onto Shrimp and burns him out as well. Cloud9 pushing into the base, Baron or not. Weaver's Wall will hold the line here for a moment, but the taunt comes through onto Keen. The cleanse used instantly. Jensen moving through to the side there as the Weaver's Wall does not fully go to the edge of the map. And Cloud9 continues pressing towards the Nexus itself only now back and away. Yeah, no Nexus turrets. They get the inhibitor and a bunch of kills, extending their lead to 12,000 gold. Altec pushing up pretty far, and what's a 3v5? Well, nine going right back in. Contracts with no fear. Altec dead again. Someday in the middle of everyone, trying to get one on his way out. The stone plate is not enough, and a double kill for Jensen should seal the fate of this game. Yeah, stacking up the kills. Finally, they'll be able to go for the Baron as Team Dignitas overchased down the stretch there. Knowing it was a 5v3 and C9 turns it around quite well. Double now you can get Baron. Now they get it. Now that there is absolutely no doubt that it won't be stolen. All you gotta Drift do is be 15 in. and one. And then you can go for the Baron. He's going Drift for They're gonna go over the wall and try to take it, but Contracts has the secure and the Shockwave to grab the kill onto Shrimp as well. Adrian running away, Cloud9 not even gonna bother with this guy. They get back, they shop, it's time for the game ending push. Yeah, 14,000 gold now, plus the Baron. Watching this one more time, just knowing they had the Twitch dead, they can be pretty free with the way they dive. Terracol comes down to draw off the damage, and Team Dignitas just being so cheeky with their defense right here. Why is Adrian up there hooking? Just give the inhibitor away. Hopefully get enough poke down to dissuade C9 from pushing through, but Jensen lands a shockwave. Team moves over to the side. They do a lot to delay, but they lose their lives in the process, and now it's 
14,000 gold lead for C9. 14,000 gold, 15 kills, four turrets, and the drakes are even, that doesn't really count, but Cloud9's got everything in their favor. All they've got to do is make the push to win the game. Dignitas needs more than a miracle here to somehow hold out against this barren up Cloud9 team with an almost full build Orianna, a closing in on full build Varus. The yeah. Shen's almost full build too? Yeah, I mean, Contracts would have to with everything with his engage and then Someday would have to land a great rupture and all tech a great ultimate for Team Dignitas to win a fight. Contracts, I don't even think, can be part of the fight for them to lose. He's just so strong. Someday, trying to flank all tech as well, coming in from behind. Cosmic Radiance being channeled, though, as all tech found his way on the stick, even the shutdown on the Jensen. All tech now collapsed on, though, and with the trade of carry for carry, Dignitas is still in a terrible spot as Cloud9 moves forward. Sneaky Contracts two! on the front line, Sneaky grabs the double kill, but he goes down. Cloud9 has lost their damage dealers. And Dignitas may yet be able to win this fight. Contracts comes back in, knocked up into the air. Impact taken low. Contracts is blobs trying to reform. Impact wants to protect them, but Keen grabs the kill. And just as we say, there's no way for Dig to win a fight. Dig wins a fight. <laughs> Altec got behind the Weaver's Wall. That flank around any of control wards that would see him put him in such a good position and they kill Jensen before he can shockwave. Look at Altec's path there, just being a sneaky little rat back here. Someday then gets Contract's initiation, but he's got a stone plate, so he's fine. Jensen's caught in a silence. They just feast him down. Nom, 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 nom. And then before Altec dies, he takes Sneaky to 20% health. So at this point, Keen just has to weave through a few threaded volleys. A rupture hits him. They get him down. And then it's just a Titanic Shen and a bunch of tanks trying to deal with the rest of the fight. So Keen able to maneuver around and flash away to make it a three for two fight for Team Dignitas. And that removes Baron on three. It means no extra inhibitors are opened up during the, the Baron power play. And it keeps Team Dignitas in the game. That is the other side of the coin. When you draft these huge tank line compositions that can snowball the game if they get ahead early, if you do lose the one or two damage sources on the team, everybody else just kind of derps around and says, well, we can't die, but what do we do? Oh, Shrimp may be in some trouble. Adrian are in a fair bit of trouble. The Ooh, teleport is canceled. Impact better run great. from the other side. Impact top side in a one versus three is Alltech and Keen, and someday we'll find the damage onto him. They'll trade Shrimp away for it, though. Another shutdown goes the way of someday. Who gets his num 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 in there and gets another stack for the Cho'Gath ult. Yeah, Dig going for the Elder here. Looks pretty uncontestable with Shrimp being down. This will be two and a half minutes for C9 to try and play around it. Altec is uh, trying to be, or sorry, Adrian is trying to be cheeky on Thresh. Stealing away those Krugs. Is he really stealing Doesn't the Krugs? Like, no, he's, he's he wants just, to recall, but the Krugs are stopping him now. harassed by them. Yeah, and now he's going to get spotted by a ward on his way back. He just doesn't want to get seen during his recall. Baron power play, negative 637 gold. We harassed Cloud9 for not taking Baron for so long, but they knew that that's all they'd get out of it. <laughs> yeah. So that's why they didn't want to take it. Baron was a trap. This could be big, though. Keen jumped on here by Contracts. As the death sentence comes in, all tech opens up but Cloud9 has already taken down the tier three turret with that Elder Drake buff. This is a very scary prospect fighting these guys. Wants it. The tanks do damage with this buff alive. Cosmic Radiance is out, Dignitas loses two, and Cloud9 going for the game win here. Sunday and Keen have to hold this. All tech coming around from the side, but it's a very tall order to somehow withstand this assault. Someday tanks as long as he can with the stone plate. All tech opening up in the back, taunted up. Brought down, Cloud9 goes for their win. They take down the Nexus turrets. They stop Dignitas into the ground in the same way they were stopped in game number one. Another shockwave to close this game out, and we are headed into game three. Yeah, just a perfect Zach engage by Contrex down the stretch. And he started off C9 with the big lead, and he's the one that ended up closing it out. He found the initiation down the stretch. 2 1 17 on that first pick, Zach. Contrex showing up to force a game three. I would be incredibly surprised if Dignitas allowed this champion through in game number three after seeing what contracts could accomplish on it. There was just a night and day difference between game one and two. The Kane strategy didn't work, but the Zack strategy was done to perfection. Yeah, and that'll be the question as well because Team Dignitas is gonna swap back to blue side. And right. if Zack is up, you're not seeing that go back to C9. Uh, it'll be a question of how many other things do they leave up to then try and pick themselves because we have seen 
the first picks in both games one and two have huge effectiveness. Maokai top lane in game one for Team Dignitas in their 23-minute win, and now Zach for contracts in, albeit longer, 39-minute win, but still very decisive in the 22-5 to kill score and the giant gold lead. Excited to see a game three. I mean, this is a great day of games. We know C9 and Dignitas are both striving to be one of those top teams. Dignitas has been so hot lately and finally cooled off a little bit by the C9 game. Well, to hear more about how Cloud9 tied up the series, let's send it over to the Analyst Dojo. Thank you very much, gentlemen. A nice victory here for Cloud9, but you knew it had to happen. Somebody had to oh, leave up no. Zach, test the waters, see if anyone is still practicing him, see if he's still as OP as we think he is. Turns out, He's exactly that open. That's the thing is like, is anyone practicing it? And like, to be fair, I, I didn't really know if Contracts is still practicing it, but he picked the champion and hey, that's step one for being able to execute on it is just lock it in and then, hey, it's so strong. You don't need to hit your E's. You don't necessarily need to pull people correctly with your Q, your right. left bounces. You don't need a five man one. You just got to pick that champ. Now, to, to be fair, they give it away to trade for another very powerful pick, that pick rather that's pi finding its way into the meta in Cho'Gath. Right, and that's the thing is I did clearly have a draft strategy here when they did this uh, because you've seen them execute on Maokai. You've, right. you've seen Impact play it. It makes sense. You know that they're going to be pretty good. And if you go for the Zac ban instead of the the uh, Maokai ban, then they you get know Maokai. they're going to get Maokai. And you don't necessarily want that. You were trying to force them to ban the Zac on blue side by leaving it up this long. Some teams have done that. We saw it get baited out once or twice yesterday. Yep. Uh, and so they went for that strategy. It didn't pan out. They tried to make the best of a bad situation. They grabbed the Shogath, which is great. Um, I also like the Graves a little bit because what happens when you end up with a team with three tanks is Graves, and I want to see this a little bit more before I 100% commit to this statement, but right. I, I believe Graves with Black Lever and Blade of the Rune King will make some sense where you can actually kite out and the tanks might not have enough damage to actually kill you, and as long as you don't get kind of blown up by their backline of Orianna, right. you can actually kite out the front line and do more damage. I mean, the one one fight that we saw for Team Dignitas late in the game around that top lane inhib was the one where once a single damage dealer goes down, down here, they don't have enough to eat through the rest of the team, and Graves would be happy to tank, face tank, three other tanks. Right, and that's what the Twitch pick is trying to do. You find a flank, you kill one of those backline members. The one thing I didn't like about the Twitch pick is that Twitch is often most effective at his assassination potential around, like, the 15-minute mark where you get that first Blade of the Rune King. The map probably has a turret or two down. You can find some pickoffs and side lanes. And then there was an example or two where the Shen Shield is such a great counter to it because you don't have to be in the right place in the map to make sure you don't get picked off by the Twitch. You just got to have that ultimate available. Exactly, and then just be quick with the R finger. But C9 got themselves off the ground in the correct way. So again, as we mentioned, Cho'Gath, a very strong champion. We had a feeling that in the top lane, left unchecked, it could get into a wild place. Contract correctly identifies, goes, goes up top early, gets multiple kills here onto Sunday. Yep, and you see just how strong this Zach pick is. Gets the flash out with E, has the Q follow-up. Someday goes down pretty easily there to uh, impact, doesn't even need to see the flash taunt. Second time, teleports back in. Wave's still not in a great spot. No help coming, and another E. This time it lands because there's no flash to get out of it. Right. And another kill. And this is another situation where level one, this is the second time I've seen a Cho'Gath try and fight a Shen level one. And you just lose the trade horribly. And right. I, you look at how the trade goes later at level four or five. He's almost actually able to get uh, uh, impact down low enough to win that and fight. And that's after having given over an assist already. So you've given an advantage to the Shen in some degree. But you can see with just a few levels, Cho'Gath should be able to persist in that lane without any issues. But he opted into, as you mentioned, a very strange level one trade where he's getting that Q spam from the Shen, and he's going to get out damaged. Yeah, so that, it's just very curious to see, you know, people probably unfamiliar with the matchup, though. I do think the Cho'Gath potential, every t uh, a pick, every time I see it, has so much strength going for it. You right. saw a couple times he got engaged on, found his way to, to, onto a Sneaky, who gets a, a, you know, a Graves alt over the top. He gets taken down to half, and then the Cho'Gath just finishes him off. I mean, let's be real. I'm not sure any of these guys have Mastery 7 on Cho'Gath yet, right? <laughs> yeah. How many pro players prior to patch 714 were really playing Cho'Gath? We we heard inklings of some people saying, well, with those ultimate changes and a few of the changes, he might be good. But it really wasn't until now that people have started to try and figure out you know, how to utilize this kit to the greatest effect. Right, and I, I think that's the big thing, is, like, we'll see this pick become more prevalent as time goes on. Uh, like you said, of the champions that are maybe OP right now and people are looking at, Cho'Gath's probably one that people have the least experience on recently. Right, I want to take a look at one other fight. This one only 12 minutes into the game for what was a 40-minute game. It just once again shows that power of the Zac. Doesn't even land the E here, but forces out the flash because you simply can't 
you can't be around him that long. He will drag you back into his team. And then here you see the power of the Shen come in because Sneaky gets down super low there. It looks like he probably would have died if that uh, you know Shen ultimate did not come in. There was an exhaust on Altec as well, but he timed it well, so the expense, com uh, expense comes in after that. Mm -hmm. The Graves all came in, but there was just that little extra shield that kept him alive. Uh, that's the first kill here, and then they just get a little bit too aggressive. Shrimp goes over the wall, gets collapsed on. Uh, just a bit of a mistake by him. And from there, you see in the gold graph, you know, it's just basically off to the races for C9, up until around the 25 minute mark where it just levels out. And it felt like they were not nearly aggressive enough so around that. That would be the one concerning thing is you give Dignitas this lead here at the 25 minute mark, and they just start the Baron. Oh, yeah. Finish it in your face. Cloud9, a lot more tentative around that, even giving over a couple small skirmishes and elongating that game to a point where there was some concern around, hey, Dignitas finds the right fight, and they could bring it back. That's the scary thing. And, of course, you are against a Cho'Gath, so you can't necessarily get it down to smite range and just go 50-50 with right. him, of course. But you can force him to walk up to you. If he loses his flash, then you can probably just force it down. And if, if he does have, doesn't have does have his flash up, or he does have his flash up, go over and try and kill him. Mm -hmm. Situations like that they could get into. And there was a sketchy team fighter too, but the goalie was so large at this point, didn't feel like Dignitas was really going to get back. Uh, my other concern for Cloud9 then going into Game 3 would be the fact that moving back to the red side, they're not going to get handed a Zac pick like they were this nope. time around, something that powerful that they can rest on to carry them through the game. And when they already had and, and showcased that difficulty in closing out the game with strong picks, I wonder how they'll be able to do the exact same thing in game three if they do find themselves with a lead. It's a huge concern as well because uh, there were so many 80 carry bans, and that's one of the things that have been a really strong point for Dignitas as well, was right. the fact that Alltech and Adrian were going off almost every single game. They still had a decent game, all things considered, on Twitch and Thresh. Adrian had some monster hooks in the early game. They were, for the most part, winning that laning phase before mid and top and jungle kind of spilled over into their lane. So you look at a couple of these factors and you say, okay, you don't get this great jungler. You don't necessarily uh, put him on like his fifth best champion in Twitch. Right. And then all of a sudden, you, you have a really tough time in game three. Two teams really close in the standings going to game three here. Meet us back here in a few minutes to see if Team Dignitas or Cloud9 can end their weekend with a win. We'll see you soon. As the taunt comes in from Impact, and Sunday is not long for this world. First blood over to Cloud9. Here's Contract Very jumps back in. Contracts now leading the charge, and Shrimp will fall. 4-0, Cloud9. Action coming through the route down onto the enemy jungler, and Shrimp is already out of the picture. Someday grab the kill onto Sneaky with the feast. All tech drops, though. I'm on, I'm on the stretch. I'm on the I'm rogue. I'm rogue. He's, he's dead. He's dead. Head trust. Go and go. I'm, I'm glossing him. Watch tree damage. Oh shit, he never died. Fighting these guys. Wants it. The tanks do damage with this buff alive. Cosmic Radiance is out. Dignitas loses two. And Cloud9 going for the game win here.